and I want to welcome you to our webinar this afternoon on the new apprenticeships in horticulture. Um, we're here in the Botanic Gardens, myself and my colleagues. Uh, if I can introduce Paul Fitters, uh, who's online, who will be uh, presenting as part of the presentation, a short presentation of slideshow, uh, and we will answer questions after. And in the background, we have Deirdre Walsh and Grace Kiernan, um, who are operating the technology in the background. So you're all very welcome this morning on what is, uh, this afternoon, I should say, on what is a very warm day in the National Botanic Gardens. I think it's 26 degrees here today, and I hope wherever you are, uh, it's a beautiful day also, and you're enjoying our late summer. Um, so the purpose of this uh, this session is to provide information on the new apprenticeships. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you will know, um, the apprenticeships were... Uh, launched at the end of July uh, by uh, the Minister for uh, Further Education and Skills, uh, Simon Harris. So horticulture has uh, two new apprenticeships uh, coming down the tracks. One is in sports turf and uh, the other one is in what we call applied horticulture, which is what I'm going to concentrate on uh, this uh, for this session. So we have a short slideshow, um, which I'll go through. And um, uh, we will take questions after. I just remind everybody that this has been recorded as well. So we'll have it up on our website in due course. So essentially, the new uh, horticulture apprenticeship is a two year uh, in duration course. Uh, the certification that's provided is level six at higher cert, which is an important point to note. It's on the higher CERT uh, framework of qualifications under the awarding body QQI. So it's two years, what we call stage one, year one, and stage two, year two. Okay. Um, the next slide just outlines what is a horticulture apprentice. So um, just to summarize, essentially, a lot of people have a notion of what an apprentice is, and that may be no different to what uh, will be envisaged in, in, in horticulture. Um, they will basically do workplace training alongside traditional classroom and online delivery run over a two year period. So the apprentices will be trained by employers who are approved in the industry. OK, there'll be two parts to that training. One will be on the job with the employer um, for about 80 percent of the time, give or take. And the other part of it will be off the job, which will be provided by Chagisk in uh, its college in the National Botanic Gardens here where we are located. So that's the broad tenant of it. Um, it's 80-20 it's, it's, it's split. Um, this program has been developed by consortium from industry uh, and Chagisk. So a lot of work has gone on into this program in the past number of years. Um, from our side, Chagas will be responsible for the education delivery and, and management of apprentices through that. Um, Solus is, is, is obviously the main uh, provider and owner of the program. They are the regulatory body um, and they will provide uh, employer onboarding and assessment. So they're key at the start of the process for employers who want to become uh, approved employers in the uh, new apprenticeship program. Um, a key website is uh, apprenticeship.ie or generation apprenticeship. If you Google any of those two terms, it will open up the apprenticeship website. And that's really the start off point for people, either would be apprentices or employers who are wishing to become approved. That's where you should go for the information. We have some 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 uh, screenshots of that coming up shortly as well. Um, so so it's 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 a collaborative arrangement. The apprenticeship we're working closely with Solus. We'll be working closely with the employer, and the whole aim is that the horticultural apprentice will be successfully steered through that program of off the job training and on the job training to become a competent horticulturalist at the end of the day. Okay, Success, successful completion of that program will allow further advancement to the existing level seven uh, degree in science and horticulture, which we partner in the delivery uh, with Southeast Technological University. So there is advancement through the program as well, okay? So um, 
Deirdre's just putting up there in the chat uh, the, uh, the 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 career seekers and the yeah the apprenticeship.ie website and that will be available later on. Now within horticulture, obviously in the in the uh, building of the apprenticeship program, we had a lot of things to consider in the horticulture sector. So uh, the consortium group that was assembled uh, put together six different streams to take account of the different elements within the horticulture industry. And they're outlined on the screen there in front of you. So students uh, and apprentices may pursue garden and parks management, hard landscaping, nursery stock production, garden center management, fruit production, and finally, vegetable production. So what that means is that an apprentice would follow though a particular stream for the duration of the two years of the apprenticeship. Approved employers would be approved in one of those streams to take on apprentices. And already I'm sure there may be some people on this call who have gone through the approval process. Uh, a number of people have, and they are uh, either validated for hard landscaping or nursery or whatever uh, in terms of streams. So then they are um, they're able to, to recruit apprentices to the program. So they're designed to fit the, those streams are designed to facilitate the training needs of the industry and the apprentices to ensure the graduates have developed the competencies necessary for a successful career. So essentially, it is our, our hope at the end of the day that we would have apprentices in all of those streams going forward um, and that the industry would be open to recruiting apprentices uh, into, their, into their sectors openly and willingly. And it's that, that process is starting now. It's taking place. Um, and um, uh, the, the, as I said, the, the key starting point for that is generationapprenticeship.ie. Um, okay. So the next slide is to do with entry requirements. And, and uh, 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 people are contacting us every day and they're saying, where do I get an application form to become an apprentice? And that's very encouraging to to, 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 to see and hear. Um, but essentially there is no application form to become an apprentice. What, a, what an apprenticeship is, is a, it's a contract of employment between a, a suitable apprentice and an approved employer. But in order to meet uh, basic requirements for entry onto the program, um, a level five is required, which may be a leaving cert, um, or it may be a level five certificate in horticulture. If both of those criteria cannot be met, work experience can be used. So a minimum of 48 weeks cumulative work experience in horticulture, which is comes with a, a, an employer's recommendation. And as, as is there in a lot of apprenticeships, there's communication and literacy requirements. Uh, so language requirements, <clears throat> what are called CEFB2 are equivalent. CEFB2 is the common European framework uh, for uh, 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 fluency uh, in communication, um, uh, plus demonstrated lit literacy and numeracy skills. So that takes into account uh, the communication and literacy. But essentially, um, the, the answer to the question is, what do I need to get in as a minimum? It's really a level five, which might be a leaving cert or a level five cert in horticulture, but it work experience is taken into account as well. Okay. Now, on the employer side, <clears throat> the key thing is the employer approval process. So again, we've been contacted by lots of employers uh, on the other side of the coin to say, how do I become an approved employer? Well, again, you register with Generation Apprenticeship, uh, which is the apprenticeship website. And um, that is where an employer registers their expression of interest, EOI. Expression of interest is registered there and that gets the ball rolling. There's a bit of information to be filled in there for Solus, as you'd expect, based on the type of business that's there and the sort of uh, 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 business model they have. Um, and the second part of that employer approval process comes from Chagas, from ourselves. We uh, ask employers who are going for registration to complete a facility self-assessment form. Now, this is an online Microsoft 365 form. It takes about a half to three quarters of an hour to fill out. 
And we're asking questions around um, suitability, uh, facilities, things around the sustainable use directive, safety, general items for employability. And that's what we're asking as well. So that gets sent back to Chagas. Um, so between Chagas and Solace, we do the approvals. And what you see there on that slide is the employer approval process under generation apprenticeship. There encircled in yellow is how to apply um, and register for approval. It's pretty straightforward. It just takes a bit of time. It just takes a bit of time to fill out the detail and fill it out accurately. Because once this is submitted, it goes to an authorizing officer in your region. And that authorizing officer has a job to do to visit the employer to assess their suitability. Um, and they have to have a look around the unit to see that everything is okay and up to speed. Um, but there is information on the website in relation to what they're looking for there. It's pretty straightforward, so it is. <clears throat> um, what you see there on the slide is the other half of it. This is the Chagas Facilities Self-Assessment uh, Form. Um, so what's highlighted in yellow there on the right-hand side, contact details, some details around the Sustainable Use Directive, people will be aware of that, that's registering with DAFM for the use of pesticide, if that's a, a case. Uh, health and safety items, uh, provision of on-the-job work elements, workplace mentor, apprentice welfare, and some summary questions. That takes about half an hour to three quarters of an hour to fill out, and it's pretty straightforward. So those are the two items for the employer. Um, just before I go on to that slide in, in, in relation to the program overview, um, just to recap. So on the employ, on the employer side, they have to register with uh, apprenticeship.ie. From the apprentice side, they have to get a contract of employment with an approved employer. And that's all they have to do to progress onto the apprenticeship program. So that's key. And that's what we're explaining to people uh, every day when we answer queries on this. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide there, Grace. So the next couple of slides outlines from an apprentice perspective, what sort of module learning content they will be exposed to. So I mentioned before that there's on the job training with the employer, but then the apprentice is released uh, to off-the-job training, which is conducted with Chagas in the uh, Botanics College in Dublin. Um, this is year one, and year one contains seven different modules, and they're outlined there. Most of them are 10 credits, but there's two five-credit modules at the end, and the credits essentially outline the volume of work that's in it, so some of them are bigger than others. So across the first year, when the student attends the college, they will be doing lectures and they'll be doing classes and they'll be doing practicals and skills in each of those seven subject areas there. All of those subject areas will have to be assessed and there'll be exams, there'll be presentations, there'll be projects, all that goes with it. In a higher education program, that's part of the, the makeup. So it is. Um, on the left-hand side of that slide, uh, what we've set out is, uh, broadly speaking, the contact time. So we're hoping to kick this off in October, and that would run from October to next June, early July. And we're looking at two days every fortnight, two days contact time every fortnight, approximately four days per month, two of which will be face-to-face -face and two of which will be online. OK, and that's to facilitate the national spread of this program. We're conscious there's people from north, south, east and west who are interested in, in this program. We're looking at two days in, in Dublin, but two days will be online each month. Um, in total, that's about 50 days, 10 weeks, total class time uh, in year one and the same in year two. So that's the they're the subjects. Um, and again, all of those are on the. Uh, employee apprenticeship brochure, which you will find on the apprenticeship.ie website also. Okay, so that's year one. And the next slide is year two. Now, year two... Um, John, sorry. Yes, Paul, sorry, Paul. Yes, come in there, Paul. And by all yeah. means, this is my colleague, Dr. Paul Fitters. Hello, everybody. Um, I just have a few questions here, and uh, one is quite relevant to exactly where you are now. So okay. 
Paul, you've muted yourself there, I'm afraid. We'll need you to start that again. Okay, okay. we'll start again. Hello, everybody. Um, I've got a few questions coming in and uh, it, it's suitable for uh, for this point uh, before yeah. John goes into year two. Brian Cullen is asking, is year one a general year? And it is. So all the apprentices, no matter what stream they go into, uh, are doing year one uh, together. However, right. yep. the second part of the question Brian asks is, can you decide your stream in year two? And the answer to that is no. You are, if you are working, say, for a nursery uh, company, they'll put you on the nursery stream. So in year one already, we know that you're going to go into year two in the nursery stream. You cannot decide halfway, uh, oh, I prefer the landscape stream or the fruit and vegetable stream. So you are employed by somebody and you go into the stream that is associated with that um, uh, that that business. Um, there's another question also from Brian Collins. Uh, how long does the employer approval process take? Uh, is there still time for employers to start the process now and be ready for October next? Now, how long is a piece of string? Um, it should be very quick, but, uh, and probably John can uh, come into there as well. It should be very quick. Uh, the employer could register fairly quickly, but then we're dependent on AOs to come around and assess you. Um, with a bit of luck, it can be done within a week. Um, and then you need to find an, an, an employee or an apprentice. So if a business already has somebody lined up, you can put that person on as the apprentice. But if that business wants to... Uh, put an ad out there and say, listen, who wants to come and work for us as an apprentice, then it'll take longer and then uh, a few weeks wouldn't be time enough. Do you want to add anything to that, John? Or is this Indeed, no, no, that's well explained, Paul, and uh, that's spot on. I, I, I think um, the approval process is um, if, if a person, if an employer um, has everything ready to go and uh, they get a visit by an authorizing officer, that approval will take place relatively quickly but i would certainly endorse what paula said if the employer has a, an employee that's ready and that the employer is happy to progress onto the apprenticeship program then that's that's very seamless the time is tight at the minute for an employer to actually recruit uh, a brand new person um, for an October start, but it that's that's not impossible. Um, it, it's really down to the employer to, it's the employer who gives the contract of employment. So that's why current employees there'll be no issue with those new people coming on to to be interviewed and to be maybe trialed. That's 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 going to take a bit of time, and an employer might be quite happy after a week or two weeks. Um, in which case they'd be ready for October, but if they're not. Um, certainly take on the individual and maybe look at it over the next year. You know, our, our aim is to be taking on um, uh, people, uh, uh, apprentices uh, in the autumn time, uh, September, October start. That's our current uh, plan um, to be finished uh, then two years thereafter. Yeah. John, there's one more question. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, from Michelle. What is the policy on foreign qualifications being accepted as an equivalent? I think this refers back to uh, the apprentices themselves, what the minimum requirement is. And um, that is dependent on recognition of prior learning. It needs to be assessed that the level of learning or the level of, of, of yeah, learning, I guess, in, in, in a foreign place is equivalent to the level that we expect here. So that goes through the the RPL procedure, uh, recognition of prior learning procedure. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, uh, agreed. Um, anybody that's coming in uh, from outside, well, their, their qualifications can be recognized through the QQI website. There's a way there to match their qualifications with the current QQI framework. Um, but that being said, the key thing to coming into the country is getting the contract of employment from an employer um uh, uh, and 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 that's the key thing so if you if if there's somebody coming into the country they need to have that contract of employment arranged with an employer and then it's between the employer and the employee uh, to to agree that the apprenticeship route will be followed okay we might move on to the yes. next slide then paul yeah 
Yep. So that's year two, and that's the subjects that are done. And again, they're stream specific. So as Paul rightly said, year one, the modules are common across all of the streams. Um, but in year two, the modules become stream specific. And I think they're pretty self-explanatory there. We've just put them all up on the screen there. Um, uh, customer service, nursery stock production, garden center management. Um, so they're all the subjects that would be done depending on the stream. They're actually different colors there. Now, what's common uh, across the modules is at the bottom of that slide, and I think it's also on the next slide, but what, what all students will do in year two is the last two modules there, financial management for horticulture and sustainable horticultural practice. So again, I think they're self-explanatory but um, the, one of the important things and was agreed by the consortium in setting up the whole apprenticeship was, was that, um, number one, the apprentices would be exposed to financial management because that's important. We're training them for a career in the industry and for a career in managing uh, aspects of the industry. So financial management is really important there. And the second one is the sustainable horticultural practice, what we call the capstone project which becomes, uh, it's like a thesis, if you like, and Paul can, can, can come in here to explain it as well. But uh, in essence, it's, it's a catch-all project for the apprentice, depending on which stream they're in. It might be growing a crop, it might be uh, fabricating a, an item in, in a landscape project. Um, but the capstone project is a big part of, of year two, and uh, it involves a presentation to uh, the class at the end of the year two as well. Yeah, perhaps I can I can jump in there as well, yeah, John. That's um, way, Bob. Yeah, so the, the project uh, we envisage that we um, collaborate with the employers to come up with a plan. So each project will be different uh, and we hope that uh, employers have jobs that maybe they don't normally get to and they can let the apprentice go on it and 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 work something out so for instance um, you might be a nursery and you might be looking for starting a new crop that you've never done before and you let the apprentice find out all the information needs to be done what's the cost what equipment is involved uh, what space does it need what nutrition does it need whatever it takes equally if you're working for a landscaper or for parks and gardens there might be an area in a park that's neglected and you want to renovate it so you might have to look at uh, what's done before what was there before what what does it cost to do it up what kind of plants are we put in etc etc so we're going to look for projects that are real and that uh, will help the employer and that as a result of that will help the apprentice as well because they should use as much as the things they've learned in the previous one and a half year together uh, to make this to a success so that's the horticultural project yep thank you yeah thanks paul yeah we'll move on um so yeah, the next the next slide um, is in relation to the employer specifically. Um, and I have one other piece of information that I'll add in here. Oh, yeah, it's there, the 1375. My apologies. So first off, uh, the employers can now claim a grant of 2000 euros per apprentice per year via apprenticeship online. So in, in, in the case where there's an approved employer and their apprentice has got registered on the Solace website through the authorizing officers process, they can progress with claiming that money from Solace. Um, the grant is paid in two arre in arrears of two payments, a thousand in uh, uh, per apprentice annually in May and then June and November and May and June and November and December. So it's two thousand per apprentice per year. That's what the uh, the scheme gives to the employer. The cost of the apprenticeship per year has only recently been finally agreed. The last time we did this webinar, we didn't have this figure, but the figure is 1,375 euros per year uh, per apprentice. That's the cost. We had estimated it would be somewhere between 13 and 1,500, and that's the cost, 1,375. And that's payable. And how that gets paid, whether it's the apprentice that pays that or the employer, that's to be agreed. Um, Associated costs is something that's been asked as well. Travel and accommodation for off the job, they are down to the 
employer and the apprentice to work that out. Uh, as I say, there will be two days of class time per month attended face to face in the college in Dublin. So the travel and the accommodation have to be taken into account for that from the uh, employer apprentice side. OK, so that's the uh, that's the the employer grant and program costs. So, I mean, I guess we're really behind the apprenticeships in Chagask. Um, there's there's actually four different apprenticeships that that Chagask are, are, are uh, involved in currently. There's two on the ag side, there's two on the heart side, and there's an one indeed on the equine side that's coming down the tracks. Um, we believe it's a very strong program for apprentices, especially those ones that want to earn as you learn. Um, so in the conversations that I'm having with a lot of people, it really ticks the box that they want to stay working. They want to advance their careers. They want to get a higher level cert six and indeed move beyond. And that's very encouraging to, to hear. I mean, uh, the government has made a major policy around apprenticeships for the last number of years. And uh, I think we have one or two figures coming up, which identifies that. So apprenticeship benefits, it's on the job learning, it's 80 percent. And that's a huge part of the learning. So um, it, 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 the, the, one of the key things about the uh, employment is the ability uh, that the apprentice will have uh, to connect with a mentor. Uh, in the employment. And that's one of the things they have to nominate. The employer has to nominate a mentor that is suitably qualified that can guide the apprentice. And that's something that would be would be followed up on very, very closely. Um, uh, so it's it's we think it's a very strong scheme. It'll help uh, employee retention, it'll help progression of skilled staff. And it's a, it's it's very much a mutual vested interest in progressing education and skills for the delivery of the business requirements. Okay. 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 Um, we that we finished our presentation, um, and I'm conscious of time, and I'm sure there might be a few questions. And Paul has is coming in there with some questions, so we're happy to take questions now. All right, Paul. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Um... There are a few questions that I let sit for a little bit. Um, so um, now I'm losing the one I was looking for. <laughs> um, okay, the first one is, how do you know you've been approved? I'm not sure if this is a, uh, an, an employer or a an apprentice in the question, but if you're an employer, I'm sure the AO will tell you. That's uh, right, If you yeah. have been approved yeah. and then you can start taking somebody on. If you're an apprentice, um, it, I don't know how they know yeah. they're being approved, but you need to have the minimum requirements and you need to be taken on by an employer. Uh, and if you agreed to go on the apprenticeship scheme, then you have been approved. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right, Paul. I mean, the on, on the employer side, the authorizing officer from Solus provides the approval status. After their visit, they will give them the approval if everything is okay. That's yeah. that's number one. So the employer, um, uh, once the vetting has taken place by the authorizing officer, that visit has to physically take place uh, and then they get their approval. So if the employer has a current employee that they're they're nominating, that's done through the authorizing officer to the Solus authorizing officer, and they actually get a registration number. And that becomes their kind of, if you like, their student number. And that means they're up and running. And then we get those numbers and we contact the apprentices to bring them in for the off the job training. Yeah. OK, thank you, John. And then there is a question. Uh, do you hold a database of apprentices looking for an apprenticeship? Um, maybe you can answer that, John. I don't think we hold a database, um, but we, we do have a list of people that are looking for it, isn't it? Yeah, so we have we have we have a number of lists. Um, uh, we're, we we uh, we we have been gathering information for for quite a while on expressions of interest that were sent directly to us in Chagask, and that was also aided by our national apprenticeship specialist Marcella Phelan, um, based in Kildalton. So yeah, we were we were gathering information from apprentices or would be apprentices or students, if you like, that were interested. Um, and uh, we do have information on the employers that are 
wanting to become approved and that are submitting to Chagask the pre-approval forms. We obviously get that information and Solus gets the information on their side. So we have we have lists of employers who want to take on apprentices and we would have some names of uh, individuals who want to become uh, in, uh, apprentices with those employers. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then we have a, a longer question here from- but Paul, if, oh, I may, if I may go back to that question, yeah. if I just, again, just to reiterate, and I, you know, even this morning I had several calls on this and, and um, uh, people, and there's great interest. It's, it's, it's fantastic to see the interest in the apprenticeship now and, and, and to know that it's, it's really going to tick the box for a lot of uh, young people out there who want to get into the industry. And indeed, people that are coming from other industries and they're coming from other backgrounds, uh, most notably finance, uh, if you like. Uh, people are wanting to get away from that and get into horticulture, which is fantastic. Um, but the key to it is, I would say, you need to something popping up there on the screen so <laughs> a, a person that wants to become an apprentice what they should do is look at the generation apprenticeship website and look for approved employers but notwithstanding that look at their own locality look at their own hinterland and look at the horticultural businesses that are in that area so if they're interested in landscapers or nursery or garden centers fruit and veg approach them that would be the the best advice approach them with a good cv and a good covering letter and say, I'd like to become an apprentice. And there's not too many employers that are turning away people that are coming to their door nowadays because it's so hard to get talent. So it is. So uh, I think the direct approach is one that should be followed also. Thank okay, you. Paul. Thank you. We have a list of questions. Uh, I haven't seen them all, but we'll work through it. There's one here from uh, Sheila. Um, hi all, we have a current employee who would be a good candidate, but has planned two weeks off in October. That's fine. You can take a holiday, uh, you can work around it, but also an extended trip of two months next year, February to April, which would mean a break in service. Given this will mean a break in their contract, would this rule out the candidate? Happy to wait until the end for an answer on this one. <laughs> um, well, we've done it now, so we might as well answer it. I think it's not a good idea have a two month break because you're meant to learn and and both working and learning. So we had a similar question last week where somebody yeah. said we take people on for 10 months a year and two months mm -hmm. a year we send them home. Uh, it's not really compatible with the program we have. So in this case, I would say wait until um, the year later and set them on the program then and then you'll be fine. Um, I agree, yeah. Then there is a, a question. In reference to year two stream specific modules, are they comparable to the current Chagas level six component modules in their respective streams? I think the answer is a bit yes and a bit no. Um, yes, they are. I mean, if it's nursery, there will be similar kind of subjects discussed that are relevant. But uh, at the same time, uh, we've developed this program with the industry uh, involved in making the program and they had very specific questions what they want their um, uh, employers or their apprentices to know to learn so it's very it should be very up to date with the latest equipment and the latest developments and things like that and uh, it should be slightly different because most of the learning is done in the job on the job you know that you're there four days a week learning there um then a question standard question we've had it many times uh, when you are off-site or on block release, does the employer pay you or does Solus? The employer pays you both for on the job and off the job. So you effectively have a contract five days a week with your employer and one day a week you're being sent to to us um, or, or you're being online to us. But anyway, even the days that you're in the off the job, you are being paid. That is the attractive bit. Um, do you have any associated hotels you could recommend nearby that offer business rates? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, thank you, Sheila. That's a nice question. Something. Yeah, different. no, I think that's a that's a fair question. And and uh, like we we in in Glasnevin here, we could supply the names of some accommodation providers. Um, but it's it's really down to individuals to they offer business rates on on different different times. So it'll yeah. be up to them to arrange that with the with the with the client. 
but yeah, it might be interesting to find out and have mm -hmm. a list ready. Yeah. That would be good. Then Simon is asking, what sort of hourly rate is typically paid to apprentices? Uh, that's a good question. We don't know yet. In principle, you have to pay the minimum wage as an employer, but you can pay whatever you like. So if you as an apprentice can negotiate a higher salary, both on and off the job, good on you, uh, go for it. But uh, we haven't specified uh, a top rate you can get paid whatever you have. So for instance, we had a question last time we did this ses uh, seminar, if we have an employer already, do we have to give them a new contract? If you have a permanent employee, you can keep this person on their contract and pay them whatever you're paying them and, and put them on the apprenticeship scheme. So it might be more than the minimum wage. Then another question, is there a maximum number of apprentices an employer can take on? We have, the answer is yes, we have set it at five per employer because we don't want one employer to block book effectively the whole uh, a, a whole stream. Now, we'd be quite happy if all the streams are full to the brim, but uh, we have set it at a maximum of five. So if you're a Glambia or something massive company that can take loads of employers on, we have set it at five. Um, and then there's a thank you, that's great. And then... Is there any assistance facility for transition to foreign languages or for staff with basic English now? What's the answer to that? Is there any assistance? It, just sit, repeat the question, Paul. Is, Is there, there any assistance or a facility for transition of foreign language staff with basic English? I mean, we, we set in the in the minimum requirements that you need to have X, Y, and Z, and including in that is basic English. The, mm. the, we, we, we don't have, as far as I know, and you might correct me if I'm wrong, John, we don't have uh, English classes to get people ready for the apprenticeship. We're not like a university where you can do a summer course to, to warm up to it. Um, so I think the answer is no, unless I'm contradicted here, John. <laughs> I'm afraid the answer is is no. We don't. Chagas doesn't have. Won't be running specific English classes to transition, uh, to answer that query. And 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 you're right, Paul. The uh the 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 language, the communication, and the mm -hmm. literacy is under the Common Euro -fra European Framework, yep. CEFB two. Essentially, that means that you when you look at that up, actually, it means that the person should have around about four thousand words, uh, in English, which gives them fluency. Now, I, 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 I never check myself, do I have 4,000 words in, in English? But um, that's what the documentation says. Um, and that's, what, uh, that's, that's what's looked for. So CEFB plus two. Yeah. Okay. And then there are two questions. It's great, all the questions. Thank you all very much. There's two questions here that are, well, maybe related. I don't know. The first one is, is there any childcare supports available for apprentices, especially for female candidates? Uh, maybe that's a broader question. I think it is a broader question. We don't have child care support here in the Botanic Gardens. Um, so I don't know what the Chagas policy is on that. We, 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 yeah, we, correct, Paul. We don't, we don't offer those uh, in in the Chagas College here. Um, I, I, obviously, we provide twenty percent of the time for training the apprentice. The employer provides eighty percent of the time. Um, so it's a question as well that should be posed to the individual employer in relation to that. But um, we're not in a position uh, at this point to to facilitate that. Yeah, and I guess as well, if, if you have children and you're working somewhere in the country, you don't want to ship them to Dublin every week either. So the childcare should be organized where you live. Uh, that would be my guess. The next question from Idel is she had a question on how do we uh, support disabled students. Um, now, Chagas has a policy for uh, disabled students, and um, it depends what your uh, disablement, is that a word, is. <laughs> Whatever the issue is, um, we, we will support it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if, 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 if we go back to the, to the, to the initial, we we'll say, entry criteria, for, to become an apprentice, um, you have to agree a contract of employment with the employer. Now, if an employer is able to recruit a person, train a person, take them on, give them a two-year contract of employment, um, um, and that person has a nominated disability, we can certainly look at that. 
um, Chagas has and is doing that uh, across the board. Um, but it is really it, it it has to come from the contract of employment. So if 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 you're in employment, obviously, uh, that's that's fine. That's good. Uh, we're happy to try and look at how we can facilitate further on the off the job training. Okay, uh, Idel, I hope this answers your question. I think it was mm. answered on the background to privately, but um, I hope this does it. Um, Brian is asking, can you share the list of employers who are seeking apprentices? Uh, Apprentices.ie only shows live vacancies. Um, I think that's all. We have the live vacancies, isn't it? We we don't have another list that, uh, of employers seeking apprentices. Whenever they have a job available, we tell them, go to Solace, put it up there, uh, yeah. and, and that's where it should be. That's right. So um, only the ones that are live. Yeah. Then what is the date in October this starts um, for application site visits to happen from an employer side? Uh, John? Yeah, well, our plan is to start in early to mid-October with the apprenticeships. Um, we were hoping that we would have gathered our quorum of apprentices uh, towards the end of September. Um uh, so yeah. it, it, there's no date set in stone, but we're trying to live by, you know, those broad times. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and then there's a, a question from somebody with a beautiful name, Israel Um Will we get training on the vehicles we use for horticultural for on-site work? Um, the, the, the vehicles that you use on site could be totally different. If you're working in a landscape contractor, you might have all kinds of material that you use. If you're working in a, in a garden, there might be other equipment. So very often the training that you need, uh, you, you should have got through the workplace. Mm -hmm. we, we have, we have a, a, an element of um, horticulture machinery, but it's kind of generic. So we train you in a few pieces of equipment but we cannot, we're not able to train you in all the equipment. So for some subjects, especially hard landscaping, uh, you might have to get the official training before you even come on the apprenticeship or maybe during uh, so that you can do the work, but that's between you and the employer. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Okay, then there's a question from Lean, Liam uh, here. I'm an employer in Glasshouse food production and we have crossover in the fruit and vegetable sector. What does it mean for the apprentices in year two? I think that's a good question. We always talked about it. There could be places where you have two industries. You might have a garden center and a nursery together. Um, what do you put an apprentice on? We'd like you to choose mm. um, and stick to it because we cannot, uh, because we, we decide, say, this October, do we have enough apprentices to run the nursery stream in year two? And only then it will go ahead for the nursery stream. So we decide already on day one when you get in, do we have enough for each stream to run? So we'd like you to make that decision. Now, the only caveat I can see there is that if you have fruit and vegetables uh, production there and say you, you opted for fruit and fruit doesn't run and vegetable does run, you might say, listen, okay, I'll swap around to vegetables if you have both if you're approved for both. Yeah, am I right, John, to say that? Yeah, no. I, uh, yeah I, I think so. I think the the uh, the scenario whereby uh, some employers indeed will have uh, uh, two enterprise streams, um, it's really down to them to, to choose with the apprentice which way they're going to go. It, it doesn't mean that the apprentice would never be working on the other uh, enterprise for the employer. It just means that their training and education that they're being directed through follows one specific stream. Yeah, yeah. well said. Thank you very much. Um, the next one, I think, is an easy. Yes, can apprentices get a student card? They are students, isn't it? They get a card, am I right? <laughs> yeah, they'd, 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 get a, they'd get a card from the college, uh, from the college here. Um, and uh, as their higher education students, uh, higher education apprentices, they should be able to apply for uh, at the universal student card also. Yeah. Um, and then I think this is just a, a, a remark to help us. Your local ETB should be able to offer part time uh, ESOL classes to help you get ready. So if somebody oh, yeah. needs, needs that kind classes. of assessment, English classes, um, you might get ready now or or whatever before mm. you want to apply that's, a good so that's point. helpful yeah. thank you very much michelle um 
Um, what happens if you do not have relevant tickets for certain machinery, a landscape apprentice? <laughs> that has been a, a heckle point here in discussions for the apprenticeship. Ultimately, it came down to uh, between you and the employer to get the, the relevant tickets um, to do that. We're not trained for clack hammers and all kinds of other equipment. Um, some things we are, but most things we're not. Uh, and it's between you and the employer to have them. So if you need those tickets on the job as a landscaper, um, you need to get them on the job from your boss. Yeah. Yeah. I agreed. It did. It did come up in the planning of the of the uh, of the program extensively, um, but I, I'd re I'd remind again apprentices that are putting themselves forward. Um, you don't have to have you know special tickets in order to get a job in horticulture. Mm. What you're doing by putting yourself forward to an employer is you're writing your CV and you're presenting that that to them to say, well, this is what I can do. Um, I'd like to do an apprenticeship in your company and I'd like to see what more I can learn. So what the employer then can offer on the other side, maybe it may be a training in certain tickets because that's their business. But that's that's an agreement between between those two in relation in Paul, just going back to the point as well about machinery uh, training paul we we'd have an extensive array of of uh, landscape and amenity uh, machinery and tools that we would train people on but uh, obviously we don't train in tickets we don't train uh, you know 360 loaders or anything like that um so that's an agreement between apprentice and employer yeah and then the last question i have on for now is um, can they continue in their education with you, with Chagos? Can, can apprentices continue with their education? And the answer is yes. We have an agreement with uh, Southeast Technical University or previously called WIT in Waterford. Um, and we give that course in the Botanic Gardens, uh, that same course. So you can progress to a level uh, seven degree in horticulture um, with us in the Botanic Gardens or uh, in Kildalton in the south uh, of the country as well, because they have the same arrangement with C2. So that's a yes. And that, from my end of things, finishes all the questions. If there's anything else, please put it up. Yeah, um, that's great, Paul. One, one thing I might add as well, um, and it's to go back to the point of the mentor within the employer uh, workforce. So what we're looking for is the employer to nominate a mentor or to be the mentor themselves. So it depends on the size of the company, obviously. Um, but we do need a nominated mentor from the company to mentor the apprentice. Um, and and employer employers need to think about that closely. Um, there was one query that, that really shone the light on this uh, for me from a, a, a company that was inquiring about taking on an apprentice. And it, it transpired anyway, that they had an, a, a person working on their workforce for about four or five years, you know, uh, at this point. So that was an ideal person with plenty of experience to be put forward as an apprentice. Um, however, that person's duties involved looking after other staff members heavily uh, in terms of directing their work. Now, you take that person out of the workforce and uh, you know you send them on 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 coursework for four days a month um that impacts on the business so the point i'm making is the employer needs to assess very carefully um who they put on the apprenticeship program that they know them well and that they they they're able to they're they're quite confident that this this arrangement will work out and it won't impact overly on the business needs because that's important because the off the job training it could become a pinch point um and sending people away for a couple of days when there's a lot of work happening that needs to be thought out and it needs to be planned yeah and, and if i can come in there as well um in year one because it is a gen generic program for all of the streams uh, we we have decided on two days every second week for the apprentices to come here but in year two uh, the program is such that you're in your stream specific group and uh so if you are in the landscape or, or let's say the garden center stream 
um, you're very busy at Christmas time and, and the month before because that's a busy time and, and spring you're very busy. So in year two, for those groups, we have block release probably weeks when it's quiet on the job. Um, so we haven't planned the dates yet or the weeks yet. And seeing We want to see first what programs run, but um, it will be probably block release a week or two week together to facilitate busy time at work. But in year one, we cannot do it because we put all the apprentices together. Yeah, I think, yeah, still more questions. Um, okay, there's a, one more question here. Um, if an apprentice ceases employment with the employer sometime during the two-year course for any reason, can they complete the two-year course with yourselves? Um, I think the answer is no. Um, you need to, it's an apprenticeship, so you need to do four days work and, 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 and two days uh, with us, um, or one day with us. Um, if employment ceases to exist and, and you have to go through the normal um, uh, systems uh, when you finish your employment with somebody if you can find another host in the same stream say you're in nursery you if you find another nursery who's willing to pay the remainder of your course and you can continue on fine i think you can continue on uh, providing they have been approved but no it's 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 difficult if you finish your employment and then if you say go to a different stream then you've missed all the work in in the stream that you started off with. So um, it, it's going to be complicated <laughs> if that happens. Um, and then there's a question here. Will you be operating machinery during time in the botanical gardens or is it just with your employer? Um, I think I mentioned already that we have some equipment that we use in Ashtown. We have a, a station in Ashtown as well, uh, which is close to the botanical gardens, um, a Chagask station, and we do some equipment work there potentially. So we have a few tractors and lawnmowers and, and things like that. You will use those things in, in Ashtown um, in the Botanic Gardens. We don't let students or apprentices lose <laughs> in the garden on equipment. Uh, it's too precious to, to have that done. But um, yes, you, you will be doing a little bit. Um, oh, oh, there is more questions coming in. Can you get in the comments? Yes. Um, is it continuous assessment or exams? Um, it, it, it's a mix, but it is mainly continuous assessment. It's mainly um, assignments and on the workplace, on things you do on the workplace. Um, and there will be small tests as well um, going around. It, it depends on the individual lecture, what they do, but uh, it's, it's going to be a mix of things also to facilitate uh, different learners. I mean, you're probably interested in an apprenticeship scheme because you're more practical rather than maybe academic. Um, and as a result of that, we'd like to have a lot of practical things that we assess you on, but not everything is going to be practical. Uh, there might be some uh, more academic stuff that you do need to know. Um, is there any decision as to what day of the week the off-site or in-college training will be? I don't know. Maybe Deirdre can come in there, but I don't know what the date is yet. Do you know, John? Uh, final decision hasn't been made. Uh, it could be a Tuesday or Wednesday, but we're we're holding holding back on that just yet until we get get the draft schedules agreed. Yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of question from Israel is the timetable. Will there be days to go to Ashtown and the Botanic Gardens and will it be complicated? Um, <laughs> it's a bit of a loaded question. We try not to complicate things, but um, we, we try to make it as simple as possible. I would say we try to have either Botanic Gardens or Ashtown, not both. So we're not shipping people up and down between them. And we will tell you well in advance uh, where it will be. The whole thing, I'm not sure if you're aware of if anybody is aware of it, but uh, there is a, a Moodle platform, which is a, 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 dig a virtual learning platform, which we use. We communicate with all the apprentices and with the employers as well through Moodle. Um, and we'll let you know exactly where you're meant to be, um, what day, and if there's any changes, we'll let you know well in advance. So uh, it shouldn't be complicated. You just have to get used to the system. 
Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I just add as well, Paul? Yeah. We're coming near the end of time and I'm very conscious of people's time on, on webinars, especially around lunchtime. Um, but the, the, where we are at the minute in terms of um employers coming on board, apprentices coming on board, um, <clears throat> I think as of this morning, we'd about 28 companies in horticulture that were at varying stages of the approval process with Solus. Okay. Um, the large majority of those companies are either landscape or nursery. Um, so they, that's where the most interest is coming from. Uh, maybe not unexpectedly, because this program was only announced by the minister's department at the end of July, beginning of August. That's holiday time for so many people. And, you know, here we are on the 7th of September. So uh, it's gaining momentum. Um uh, the information we've supplied uh, will uh, be valid for whether there's an intake of, a, of an apprentice in this October or for future intakes. So it will remain valid. Chagas is very much behind this program with the consortium group um, who set it up, uh, made up of industry members and uh, very anxious to see it happening. Um, so I it, it, the, the, the question was asked there about the streams and the numbers, Paul, like we have six streams and um, we need a minimum of seven apprentices to run a stream. OK, um, and we might be there or thereabouts on one or two of the streams, but we're not on the others. And that's that's just the way it is. Um, uh, landscape and nursery are coming forward Uh um uh, so there's interest in that in those two quarters um but we welcome interest from all six quarters and we welcome people to become approved employers regardless of whether it's this year they might have an apprentice or next year this is a this is a, a new program which will bring new employees into the sector it's as simple as that and whether it happens for you uh, this autumn or next autumn, now is the time to be planning it. It will open the door for people who have an interest in horticulture to approach you as an approved employer and to set up a contract of employment and get on the road. I think it will invite a great new generation of people into horticulture. I think it will tick the box um, for education, for learning, and for earning. And that's, in this day and age, that's so, so important. Yes, there will be logistical issues and there'll be all sorts of things to iron out and we're well used to trying, we're well used to dealing with those and, and we'll, we'll deal with those. Um, but it's a fantastic new scheme and employers, uh, you have nothing to lose by becoming an approved employer. Okay. Yeah, from me as well. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending and for all your questions. It helps everybody, I think. So that was very good. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll see some or many of you in the future. In our yes, college. indeed. So thank so you very much. Th it, 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 th thanks, Paul. It has been recorded. We'll have the recording up on our Chagas website very shortly. Um, you can reach us at chagas.ie. Um, all our details are on our college page on the Chagas website. Um, so I want to thank Paul, I want to thank Grace, and thank Deirdre in the background for making all this happen. Um, thank you to all the participants for staying on for so long. And uh, please reach out if we can in any way help you on your journey uh, in the apprenticeship domain going forward. Okay, thank you very much. We'll close it off at that. Bye for now. Bye -bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.